Hey guys, good evening. So this is a vlog that I have been promising for quite some time. Basically just needed time to pass so that I could uh, get some data. Uh, this vlog is going to be basically a follow-up to my solar installation vlog. If you haven't seen that vlog, I encourage you to watch it before you get into this one. Um, I touched a lot more on the actual installation on the company that did the install, uh, that type of thing. So I think it's important for you to see. Here's what I've decided to do. It actually was my wife's idea. Uh, I know all this information I'm going to give you today is out there, but it's, it's in written form and it's in, in the form of replies to lots of people's comments and questions. So I'm putting all that into one place. So I kind of went through all the comments on the solar video. I wrote down uh, kind of the, the baseline of each topic that uh, people had asked me about. And they were all great questions. Uh, I, I, let me just say I appreciate all of you that, um, that asked me questions. So let's start. I, and I've got my little notes. I'll ever do this, by the way. I had, hate sitting down and talking. I don't know how old dog new tricks Paul, I don't know how he does it. He's got a little chicken that sits on his couch and, and so I put a snowman over here. So Paul, if by some chance you happen to watch this vlog, this snowman is in your honor. I also have uh, some, my contra, part of my contract with uh, LES Solar. First question I'm gonna answer is not even on my list, but you know, where is LES Solar? That's in the first vlog. I think it's at the end. Maybe it flashes up at some point. I'm not sure where, but that information there. The best way to find them is uh, for face, in Facebook. Just do LES Solar Pongasinon. <laughs> LES Solar Pongasinon. Um, one of the questions that somebody had asked me is does LES install nationwide? And I, I'm sure, I have no doubt that they couldn't. Um, the, and I asked them this question, actually, uh, after I got this comment. And, and Ben, who's the, the engineer uh, for the project, was very upfront. And he said, Mr. Baker, he said, I, we always encourage people to find an installer near where they live. That just speaks to his, I mean, he could have easily said, yeah, I'll fly to Mindanao and do whatever. And charge you for it um, but even more importantly he understands that there's follow-up uh, involved especially in those first few weeks after your installation the system has to kind of get to know you and your habits and your usage and and he he may even have to do some tweaking things like I think they came out maybe maybe with three follow-up visits after they installed one was uh, the, uh, the bottom line of the battery usage, so it, it's, it was set at 30%. I needed it to be lower. Uh, the, the, the best and safest place to put an, a lithium battery uh, as far as drawing out of it is, is you, you gotta leave 20% in it. Otherwise you could damage uh, and shorten the length of the, the life of the battery. So he did come out and adjust it from 30 to 20. Um, that's that's where the system says okay no more battery power so uh, my battery should last a long time and we're getting the maximum amount we can from it each night um, so there there is follow-up good advice from Ben find you an installer close to where you are so that if, if there is problems or is just you know programming stuff he can he can easily get there and take care of system details all right um, again this is in the first vlog but I'll go ahead and, and kind of give you a recap of what it is we we actually installed here and I'm just gonna read it right off of my contract I did I did 12 solar panels those are 540 watt uh, seraphim solar panels um, so that's a that's a maximum of 5400 uh, kilowatts that my panels are capable of producing. Uh, I paid 127,200 pesos for those 12 panels. I don't know what that comes to per a piece. That's a little over 10,000 a piece, I believe. 
I did a hybrid on-grid inverter, DEYE uh, is the brand, 5.4 kilowatt, 48 volt system. It's a hybrid on-grid inverter um, with Wi-Fi monitoring and, a, and an export controller, if you know what that is. I paid 83,000 pesos for that inverter. Now, I had a recently had a question about, about the DEYE converter. And, and here's how I responded to the question. The question was that somebody knew someone who had uh, done some research in the DEYE, and the research that they did seemed to have an issue uh, right around the 16 to 18 month of uh, service. The research I did, because I, I did research these brands before I installed the system, I couldn't find anything, at least with the 5.4 kVW inverter the DEY puts out. Um, I couldn't find anything to that effect. Uh, however, uh, just in case my inverter does have an issue, um, it, it does come, and I'm touching on one of my other questions, which is warranties. It does come with a five-year warranty. So I know if I have an issue with it within that five years or 60 months, um, it's going to get addressed. It's going to get taken care of. Battery, blue carbon, life. 04 48 volt 200 amp hour battery. I paid 90,000 for pesos for that battery. And then there's a whole list of protective body, you know, breaker boxes and breakers and grounding equipment and lightning protection. Paid 10,500 pesos for that. Uh, the mounting system and PVCs and railings, and that's for everything your panels and, and, and the works. I paid 12,180 pesos for that. Electrical connectors, there's all kinds of electrical connectors involved in that install. For each panel, for the inverter, for the batteries, all of it. Uh, that's 19,500 pesos. Installation and um, mobilization costs, that's basically delivery. They, they go to Manila, their suppliers in Manila. So they physically go to Manila, pick all of your equipment up, deliver it to your home the day prior to the install. That was 25,000 pesos for a total of 346,390 or 80 pesos. <laughs> I, um, my printed copy's not too good. So that's the, that's the cost of the system that we got. And number three, warranties. Uh, touched base with it on the, the inverter, five-year warranty on the inverter. On my solar panels, I have a 10-year a product warranty on my solar panels. So again, 10 years on the solar panels, five years on the inverter, one year on the battery, and one year on uh, the workmanship, uh, basically the installation. So that's the warranty that came with my purchase. Uh, they do have a rider statement here. It says uh, warranty does not cover damage done by fire, flood, earthquake, acts of God, or calamities, uh, only product defects. Um, and and I'm, I'm saying that simply because I, I had a question to that effect. Is, is there a warranty for natural disasters? And, and bottom line is no. We took almost direct hits this year from two different typhoons. One very strong one. One uh, on the lower end. Um, I, you know, when I, when I built the house, I, I put a lot of thought into how I wanted to position the home. Uh, how I could get Mac because I knew I wanted to go solar. I know I did it after the build, but in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to go solar. So I tried to position my house, build my roof line, have it built a certain way, not a high pitched, or you know, I didn't want to, you know, wind to be able to get up underneath it and rip it apart. So it's a fairly low profile, uh, minimal slope. It, the largest part of my roof faces south, which is the, you know, obviously, and especially this time of year, um, you know, the sun doesn't stay up long here, believe it or not. It, it, it comes up about, oh, 5.30 in the morning, goes down at 5.30 in the evening. So I'm getting about 12 hours. But that first, about an hour and a half, really not because it's, the sun's so, so low in the sky. You're not getting a lot of uh, solar then, and you're not getting a lot the last hour and a half. So basically, about four o'clock, um, any major energy usages like running the pool pump or um, you know 
washing a lot of dishes or clothes because the water well is going to be running. Those types of things we just and I'm going to talk about talk to this in a little bit. You you got to you got to be you got to be on top of your game when it comes to working your system uh, to its greatest benefit. I guess is the best way I can put that. And I'll talk a little bit more about details of that what I just said in, in, a, in a minute, okay? So, no warranties for natural disasters. Um, but I will say we, we suffered zero damage, uh, knock on wood, in case there's another typhoon. Uh, we've had a couple of earthquakes. Um, again, no damage. So, the system's holding up. It's, it's, they've installed it well. The panels are very durable. Um, we don't get hail here, but, and somebody, somebody in the comment, I was, it was interesting going back and seeing old comments, said, I must really like my Dominican home because I, I, I talk about it a lot. And I do. And here's why, because that's, that's the only solar experience I've had prior to this one. So if you've heard me talk about my Dominican house um, a lot, I apologize for that, but um, it is, it's the only experience I have with any this type of equipment. There I do actually get, had gotten some hail um, coming off the mountains. Uh, not, not frequently, rains every night, but hail isn't that, that common. Um, but I, I, just, I did not suffer any damage to my panels. So my guess is they're just built in a way that that's, uh, I don't know what the material is on the top, but it's apparently they're, they're fairly, fairly tough. Let's go on to number five. Uh, what is on my solar? So I, I've got, actually gotten this question a lot because I, I, and I don't know if it's because maybe it's something I said in the first video or, or what, but Everything here is on my solar. Water well, uh, pool pump, pressure tank, and the lights, the fans, all the appliances, air conditioning, the, even the, the new slide gate, automatic slide gate, all of it runs on my solar system. You have options with this system as far as if you go into, if you're um, your on-grid power company, in our case, it's Torelco, goes into brownout. Then the automatic transfer switch is going to switch you to battery. And of course, if it's daylight, it's no big deal. Um, you're, you're, you know, the sun's powering everything. If it's at night and, and your grid goes down to a brownout and you switch to battery, then you, as the, as the, owner of the system with the help of LES's programming can actually um, determine what you want to run off of the battery during that scenario because there are some things uh, like in my house for example the highest energy users are the pool pump uh, the water pump the on-demand water heaters things of that nature that use lots of power and if you're on battery and you have no grid backup then you can drain that battery at night very quickly and find yourself in your own little brownout uh, when that battery runs out and if the power grid is not back up and running and the sun's still down so um, for us in this house um, when that happens the only thing that really that cuts off uh, on its that does not in other words the breakers don't function during that scenario is my on-demand water heaters um, I could easily you know have them take that off and just where you know I could physically turn my own water heater off but uh, I that 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 one thing we typically shower you know fairly early anyway but oftentimes before the sun goes down and uh, not a big deal for me for those not to function if we find ourselves at night in a brownout from the power grid and on battery power. So that that's maybe what um, what I was talking about when somebody um, asked you know why certain things were not on my system, but they are. Everything is uh, on my solar system. Can I get totally off grid? 
the answer to that is, is, is um, it's not an easy answer because it's very individualized to the home, to the, to the solar system, to the weather in your location. All of those things play a factor. Um, so I tried to be intelligent about what I put in here, but it's still a lot of stuff. And uh, additionally, I've got a water well pump, I've got a pool filter, a filtration pump. Um, yeah, all those things take, take power. Um, so here, uh, it's very weather dependent. Um, if, if we have, you know, four or five days of rain, which I have seen, this year not so much, but last year when we were in Belonga, I saw 14 straight days of rain, nonstop. I'd never seen anything like it. Had that home we were living in been a solar home, we'd have been out of luck if, if we did not have on-grid. Um, yeah, we just would have been. So the, the on-grid part for this house is my third tier of electric access. So in other words, obviously the sun, when it's up, that's my tier one. Battery at night, that's tier two. And then if, if I don't have the sun up and the battery goes out, is used up, then I've got, I've got the grid. Uh, I could have bought a, a generator as my third tier, um, but I am, I am seeing now it would be costly, uh, not to mention fairly inconvenient to utilize that as my third tier. Diesel is kind of expensive, and just the storage of the diesel that I would need to be able to keep a generator running uh, would, have been, would have been ridiculous. So I'm glad that we went with the on-grid even though um, our, our on-grid source is not that reliable and they do have a lot of brownouts. We have been very blessed in the fact that about the 110 days we've had this system, we've only experienced two days or two, actually two short periods of time where we just had no power. It was nighttime, the sun was not up, our battery had you know, because we'd had a, a like a rain event the day before and our battery never made it to 100% because it was just cloudy all day, raining all day. So we started the night with a 60% battery, which is not a good thing for us. And um, yeah, by three or four, we were out of battery and Torelco was down and they were in brownout. So we had a two or two or couple hour time period where we just didn't have any power. And that's happened twice. Um, I will say though that um, based on historical fact of what's been shared with me, uh, the average person in this community suffers a brownout about every other day, sometimes every day. Um, we have not experienced that because of this system. I'm very grateful. All right, so yeah, the, the short answer, yes, you could get off grid per se, but you know, weather has a lot to do with that, a whole lot to do with it. If you didn't want to use the power company as your third tier, you could do a generator, but there are some downsides to that as well. The good. The bad. The Philippines.